to bring that in a little bit. I've had to change the angle to do some of it. No, it's going to make it too far away. Sorry, everyone. Hi, Fiona. Is that all right? I've had to change the angle this week because of the, the leaving the window. So I feel like I've just spent about 10 minutes mucking about with iPads and phones and different angles because the light was coming in and was making me a little bit fuzzy and I'm also really really far away now and even with my glasses on I'm still not able to see very well so I can't read that Alex actually could you pass my phone or maybe put my phone there pass my phone so let me look at thingies hi everyone how are you today I can't read anything because I'm blind as a bat so I'm going to stick my phone on as well I've normally got the iPad a lot closer to me so I can kind of see as I'm going along but I've had to put this quite far away because I need to try and get the window involved today which has meant that I'm now miles away from the camera and well as you know my eyesight is absolutely horrendous and it's really horrendous so I'm going to have to put my phone on at the same time which is going to really 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 mess with this because that involves using two things <laughs> technology at once Do you want me to read it? Yes I do want to read it I'm just um, I'm actually not sure though how you do that. Can you read that? The screen from here. Bit far. It's a bit far. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to um, follow myself. Uh, do you know what? I'll just, I'll just stay. Um, it's hi. It's Grandad. Hello, Laura. Oh, I'm glad you're doing it because it's going to be really, really nice. And Fiona said, "Good morning, Mrs. C." Oh God, look at those iPads. Right, let's get started. I hope you're all well today. Um, apologies in advance, I can't see the screen from here because I've had to push it further back so we can get the window in. So I can't read any comments, but Alex will try to put the eye on them and let me know what you're saying. So I'll come back and ask you later to to. Um, I hope you're all well today. It's nice to see you. Thank you for returning if you are returning and thank you for joining me if you are a newbie. Hello, it's nice to see you. So this is a lesson that I normally do when I first start at school and I don't know any of the children because it's a really really nice one it involves using your name which helps me then when I'm walking around get the names into my brain however that was when I was a visiting teacher and I used to travel around lots and lots of different schools in Perth and Ross I now am based in a school so I am based in Dunbarney which is very 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 strange because Laura you'll get this and oh no Fiona Laura will get this, we are actually old Dunbarney pupils. The school is very different to when we were there. It's much bigger, because Bridge of Iron is a much bigger place, but it is very, very strange when you go back and work in a school that you've actually been in. Very, very odd situation. I've also worked in the high school, which was very weird as well. So now that I am based in the Bridge of Iron School Dunbarney, it's very weird because I can't actually do this lesson anymore. Because I know the kids. I know the kids all really, really, really well. I know them all. I still get their names muddled up constantly, but that's more to do with my brain than anything else. So uh, yeah, so I can't really do this lesson like I used to do, but it's an absolute filter. And I've actually noticed since I've started doing it, it's appearing in loads and loads of different places. I see it all the time on Pinterest. I actually saw it when I was in Viewlands about a month ago, it was up on the wall. So I know that lots and lots of people are still doing it. It's a really, really good one. So yeah, so all you'll need for today is a piece of I've gone for A4, but it depends what size you want to go for. Plain white paper. It needs to be quite thin because we're actually going to use the window as a light box yeah. to help us. What did I tell you the other day about asking questions in the middle of my phone? Mm. I told you not to do it because it breaks <laughs> my train of thought. Put your hand up. Like in the past. No. Okay, so you need a thin bit of paper because we need to use it as a light box. Alex is asking why and you'll find out quite soon. See, the thin bit of paper, I've gone for E4 just so it's nice and small. You'll need a pencil. Now, I am going to use my pencil quite heavy and hard so that you can see it at home. When you're using your pencil, however, I want you to try and use it quite light until I tell you to heavy up. Now, I've gone for quite a soft pencil. This is a 4B pencil. Most of you have probably got an HB at home. That's fine. But the reason I've gone for a 4B is it's softer and it's darker, so it'll help me show you at home what you've got. Have you got a 5B? Yeah. Right, you take the 4B then. I'll take the 5B. Okay, he's got a 4B, so it's actually a lighter pencil. So you pencil, you need this, and you need to be near a window. Um, 
we're presumably really lucky here we've got nice doors in our kitchen so I can use the glass from the window but if you're far away and disappear we can. Now as per usual I'll be posting this afterwards so you can catch up and you can pause it any time I think so you can always wait if you need to run away. Shushed. Okay. Right what we're going to do first of all is we need to fold this paper. Now you're not going to fold it like you're making a card. Okay, you're actually going to fold it lengthways. So you're folding it landscape. Um, almost like a hot dog, hot dog roll kind of thing. Now if you've been watching the last couple of lessons, you'll know that I've been going on about folding. Alex is doing it already, so well done to you, Alex, for listening. But if you're terrible at folding, what to do is bring the corners up first and hold quite loosely. And then tippy toe your fingers into the middle, bring them down and fold along. Okay, so you want it to be you want it to be in the middle. You are going to eventually open up the paper, so it won't matter if it's not exactly in the middle, but you want it to be in the middle. Okay, now the next thing you're going to do is you are going to be placing your name in the middle of the paper. So it's really, really important that you treat the fold of the paper like it's aligning your daughter. Okay, now what I mean by that is, and I want you to listen to this, when you're writing your name, it's really important that it's on the line. Alex, when he's writing, always has a little space above his line. Oh no, who's going to choose that? He always has a little space above his line. No, wait, if, if Dale goes, then he'll disappear. Okay, so we're going to write our name along that fold. Double check it's not where the paper opens, because things won't work. Now, in the classroom, when I do this as a lesson, there's always at least one person that misses that, and we have a disaster later on. So I'm going to repeat what I've just said. I want you, when it comes to writing your name, to write it along the fold of the paper. That's the bit that does not open. And I want you to treat that like a line in your jotter. So when you're doing your handwriting class, you're always told to write on the line. Not a millimetre above it, and not a millimetre below it. Although that would be impossible, because I'd be on the table eventually, wouldn't I? Yeah. So, when it comes to writing your name. Now, what I want you to do first of all, don't start this until I've spoken to you a little bit. When you write your name first of all, I want you to think about just writing it normally first. Eventually, yes, we are going to go into bubble letters, but at the minute, I want you to write it in single line. Just like you would do if you were writing it in your, your jaw chart. But what I want you to do is try and have the letters really close to each other. Not touching yet, but close to each other. If you want to join them together, perfect. But I want you to have them close together. So I'm just going to show you what I would like you to do when it comes to writing your name. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Okay, so this rectangle, I want you to imagine that's my sheet of paper, the one that I've just folded. Okay, and when it comes to writing your name, I want you to have it on the line. I'll go back to front, but I'll go on the line, and I want it to be almost touching, as close as you can get it. What I mean is, don't you have massive spaces in between your letters? Now, if you have got a big name, for example, it's more than, say, five letters. Say it's more than six letters. Alexander, for example. That's huge. So if you are doing a big name, what I want you to do is space them out. Now, if you caught up with our Easter card lesson, you'll remember what we spoke about here. So I want you to space out your letters to try and fit them all in. Because often what happens is, people start off like this. They start off with Alexander, and then they get to the end, and they have to squeeze in the last two letters. Okay, so see how the E and the R is really, really small. So you need to try and space it out. It does look a bit normal. I try to make it work. <laughs> try to make it work. Okay. So you need to try and space it out. So what you want to do, is you want to have your first letter done first, your last letter at the end. Then work out roughly what, what letter goes in the middle. Now, if it's an even number, that's going to be quite hard. Shushed. If it's an odd number, it's the middle letter. Yes, you can just do Alex. You yeah. don't get called Alexander unless you're being naughty. So put your middle letter then in the middle. So I'm telling you this now at the beginning before you go away and do your name. So for Alexander, the A would go in the middle. And then you know in that space you've got left, you've got to try and squeeze in three letters. So this is to get your spacing better. Because often when I'm doing poster work or graphics work in the classroom, the word always starts off really, really nicely, 
and then it gets towards the end, we've done a bit of space and we try and squish it all in. Harris is really, really good at this when he writes birthday cards. He always has like har is underneath it because he runs out of space, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. When he writes his name, he never has it all in one space because he runs out. So you see how that's spaced out much, much nicer than the one on the bottom. Okay, so you have folded your paper in half. And remember what I'm saying, going along the fold. And what you're now going to do is, I just want you to singly write your name. So I've done my first name, which for those of you at home is Lisa. Is it Scotland's Scotland? What I want you to do just now is just do your another name. So I'm going to do Mrs C for a minute and I'll show you Alex. Okay, if you've got a really short name by the way, imagine it's like three letters long or two letters long. Do a full stop in your initial to make it bigger, to make your insects a bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to do this first of all just to show you what I would like you to do. So I'm going to do my M. By the way, you can go for capitals or lowercase. It's entirely up to you. And just do it normally like you would do it just now. Primary 7, if you're watching just now, you'll find this really, really easy. If you are down in school in P4, you might find this a little bit trickier. So I'm just going to go nice and slow for you today. Okay, so there's Mrs C, done in single letters. Touching the line, and I've put a full stop in there just to make it a bit more interesting. In fact, I'm going to put a full stop at the end as well. And by the way, if you started away at the bottom of the paper and you've got loads of spa spare, leave it. Don't, don't rub it out now and start all over again because that way, when you open it up, you'll have a lot of space. Oh yeah. You'll have a lot of space around your name. Okay, so don't worry if it's really squished down when you get the door. Yeah, that's happened. Oh, it never comes. I'm never getting to excite him. Okay. Hopefully, it's nothing I have to sign for. Like something that you've got to be over 18 to receive from Amazon. So, once you've got that done, so remember what I said, it's important that your letters are touching for this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice doing these as the bubble letters. So if, for example, you've got that, what you're now going to do is go around the letter to make that a bubble. Did you get the door? Is it anything exciting? Flowers? Wine? Chocolate? You're just going to go around your aim then. And that makes the letters bigger, chunkier, and it'll help them touch. Just stick up there. Oh, it's paper. Just leave it there. It's paper. More paper for you. I couldn't get into my cupboard before we had lockdown, so I've got no art resources here at home, so I keep having to buy stuff on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Don't mind, just you keep going with you, Alex. Okay, so you see how that's now starting to touch, so I'm going to go back to my original. So, I'm going to go around your letters now, and you can get super fancy with this. You can go for curves, you can go for angles, you can, as I said earlier, you can make your letters join together. Why do you need to start doing? Yeah, at the bottom, it? Oh, was it not when you did it? Yeah, it's too high. It's, he wasn't going to get the bottom. So he needs to go around that. Yeah. So I've got my M and an R touching. And if you're at home right now, I'm drawing quite hard with my heavy pencil just because I need to show you at home. I would love it if you could do it quite lightly at the minute. So Alex, could you just press it a little bit lighter just now with your pencil? Okay. Um, it's important that mummy does it hard just because people need to see it at home. But eventually we don't actually want these lines to be there. And just look at the sea on. I've got a really, really bad habit of singing normally when I'm drawing. <laughs> Which I don't think you want to hear at home. Because I've not got the best singing voice, do I? No, you're thinking of the sea and you're going to um, I think Alex is enough for you just now. Okay. Where well, you're getting the hang of it. Okay. So we've got Mrs. C going round that and doubles. Now they are all touching. You can see my single lines are inside. And they're all touching. But the good thing is with the single lines, if I've done them lightly, I can actually rub those out. I don't need to do this, by the way. I'm just doing it because I'm a perfectionist. Right, Alex, I want you to go around Alex now to make it a bubble later. So bubble later means it's not a single. It's got an inside. I know. 
I've seen this done online just with single lines and it is great but it creates more of like a stick insect there's not a lot of meat there around the insect to decorate so that's why I quite like to do this bubble letters yes you're going to turn these into insects they can be insects or aliens no don't do an insect you can do an alien the example that I did yesterday I tried to do like a space theme because we did space chalk designs the week before so they do a space one, but I love doing these as insects that be butterflies or stick insects or something in the rainforest or in the woodland or a spacey one. It's up to you what you end up doing this. I cannot wait to see these when they're finished because at the minute I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know what materials you're planning on using. I don't know what your names are that you're doing. So every single time you do this, you'll end up with a different result. And the brilliant thing is about this, you'll do it and it I don't know where you're going to go with it. I don't know how you're going to turn it into whatever it is that you do. So I cannot wait to see these when they're finished. They always look different. And you all think differently as well. So this lesson, I'm showing you how to do it. But as per usual, when you come back to me at the end, we are going to end up with so many different variations. And hopefully as well, it'll make my little brain get thinking about how I do this in future. Right. Hopefully you've got all your names done now. I've done a lot of blethering this morning. What we're now going to do is you're going to be using the window in a second as a light box. Now, before you do that, I want you to go over the outline of the whole name really quite heavy. Now, what I mean is the tops and the bottoms and the sides. What I don't want you to go over are the lines that run in between your letters. So see how my M and my R are touching? That line there, I'm not bothered about you going over that too heavy. So it's really just that outside shape. So the top of the M down until it meets the R, around until it meets the S, around until it meets the C. I hope that makes sense. So I'm not bothered about the lines in between, it's just the absolute outside shape. So Alex, oh you're still on that. Sorry, that's because you have to go and get the postman. What postman was it? The normal one? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know either. You don't know the postman? No. It's going very quiet here. It's like the day we were doing optical illusion circles, which you use high levels of concentration. This is a brilliant one to in the classroom because it really does get really focused. There's not a lot of blathering when this is going on until the creative bit at the end. So I've gone over my Mrs. C much, much heavier with a much, much heavier line with my soft pencil at home. You're probably got an HB pencil and you're struggling a little bit with this um, but I like to use a hard pencil because also you can rub them out at the end so if I just show you that so you can see it okay so I've not gone over the line in between my M and my R because I don't need to it's just the out, outside shape it helps with the light box section which we're about to work on next Right, Fiona, sorry, I said earlier I couldn't read these comments. So you've just said, what do you do when you've got a Y in your name? Oh, so you mean that the Y... Well, I would just move it up from the line or do a capital one. Amy, oh, of course, Amy. Amy does have a Y in her name. So, Amy, sorry, you've probably done this by now. You've probably problem solved it. So I would do... Let's just do your Y above it. Or do it as capitals. Sorry, feel bad now. Anyone else put something up there that I've missed? Right, Alex, those letters, he thinks he's done, but his E and his X and his L are not touching. They need to be touching. So what he has to do is he has to bring his L along a little bit longer to join that on. And he'll also need to do that with his E. It doesn't matter how it touches, by the way, as long as they're touching. Or you could make it go straight, or, or make your X wider. Just make your X wider. So as I said earlier, it's really important these touch everywhere. And as per usual, having my old darling Alex here, 
I love because it helps me remember how it might be in the classroom right now and the mistakes that are getting made. So well done you for making a mistake. Love it. Right, are you happy? You've not done the top. It's not confusing. Just go over around the lines that you want to be a bit heavier and put the top on your elf. Right, next up. So this is when you're going to need your window. Now before you go to the window, open it up and double check that that is going to be in the middle. If it's not in the middle, if it's upside down right now and it's at the top of the paper, you need to start again. And you should be listening. <laughs> okay, because this is normally when my eyes off the ball, got a class of 30, we're all over, going over to the window, and I've not double checked everybody, and then someone comes over in 10 minutes' time and goes, Mrs. Copeland, mine's not locked. And I say, oh, darn it, I forgot to look at everybody's. So make sure it's in the middle at this point. And if it's not in the middle, rub it out and start again or go and get another bit of paper. Right. What you now need to do is go to your window. And if you push this, you won't be able to see this because of the bright light, but I'll show you in a second. If you push that up against the window, because it's quite thin paper, and because you press quite heavy with your light, you should be able to see the reverse coming through with the light. You might have to press a little bit on the paper, and whoever it is that cleans your windows at home is going to absolutely hate you after this lesson, because you're going to end up with thumbprints and smudgy marks all over it. My windows are always dirty in this house because of Mirren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> messy. She's the messy one, yeah. Now, after I do this bit, I am not going to bore you all by sitting here and decorating my Mrs. C. So this will be, for the first time ever, finished quite sharply today. But what I'll do is Alex and I will sit and decorate ours, and then I'll put mine up later on. I might start decorating it. Okay, done. Okay. I don't sit and do this, then I have to go and do some sort of housework. Okay. This side. Okay. okay. Hang on a minute, I'll turn around and look in a minute. I'll need to check the comments as well in a minute and make sure that nobody's struggling. Okay, so this is also, if you're ever looking to trace anything, this is also a really, really good way to trace. In, in high school, you'll end up shushed. That's what you need to do just now, shushed. In high school, you always end up with light boxes, but we don't have those in primary and we very rarely have them at home. But a light box is a great way. So if you ever want to trace anything, Get a bit of tracing paper or grease proof paper from the cupboard, trace over whatever it is you want to do. Put that up against the window. Bit of masking tape's always great. So mm -hmm. move in. Put your bit of paper on top. It should come through, and then you have it on your piece of paper. Right, you're what are you saying to me while I'm speaking to everybody? Right, he's done. Voila! He is done. So now he is going to go to the window. Hopefully that'll come through. You might need to go over it a little bit heavier in places. At the top of your knees, a bit faint. You can have the fighting pencil if you want. Uh, so he's going to go over that now at the window. I've done mine at the window. So this will be the right way round. It's actually not. It's because of the, the camera. This will be the right way round. This was my right way round one. Okay, so when you open that up now, you end up with that. Okay? And it doesn't, I don't know what way up you decide to go with this. I mean, it could be the face of an alien, this could be its mouth, it could be a three-eyed alien with loads of crazy, like Medusa, loads of snakes coming out of its head. Or it could go this way. And it could have, like, feelers that come out of its nostrils. Or it could have legs that grow out of these. This could just, I don't know, its brain could be in there, it could have eyes, I don't know where you're going to go. Or, if you've ended up with quite a small thing in the middle, you could end up drawing a beautiful dragonfly wings on the background. You could have trees coming down the sides for your rainforest. You could have, if it's an alien, you could have it sitting on a planet right now. I think I did that on my example actually. You could have stars yeah. in the background, you could have planets in the background, or a rocket. Um, you can colour fill this inside so you can make a reptile skin. What you don't want to do at this point is you want to try and disguise the name as much as possible. So you don't want to colour in the M red, then the R yellow, 
then the C, another colour, because then the name will show up. You want to try and now ignore the fact that it was your name, and you want to create this, this whole thing as your teacher. You don't want to, you, you want to forget about the line that's in the middle, and you want to forget about the lines that separate your letters. That's why I said don't go over those. Okay, you go down to that bottom window there. Yeah, go down to that window there, don't stand behind me. That's why I put that line up there. Okay. Um, right, so I've used the window, I'm actually going to put this down here. Oh, yeah, like, oh, oh. Oh, right, so now I could start to add things onto this. So, what way did I say that I liked the idea of that? I like the Medusa idea actually. Medusa thing. Whenever I think of Medusa, I always think of, I don't know, she's watching today, my good friend. Henry's mummy Carrie when she was dressed with her big Medusa head on one Halloween. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so I could add teeth into this. There are no legs. Teeth into this now. Its nose could have some uh, nostrils inside it. So of course you're adding things on. But it's a great way to get a symmetrical sort of thing. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Make that his eyes. Actually, it's reminding me now of a frog or some sort of reptile thing. Because it has snakes on Um, This could be a snake's. So a snake could have tongues coming out of its and their mouths. Do you even know, know what Medusa is? Mm -hmm. Someone who turns into stone, I think. Mm. She's a superwoman. So you normally watch us, um, you might have noticed that I'm not as stressed as I was last couple weeks. Because Mr. C's home, yay! Which means that I don't have to deal with him in the background. What's wrong with you? Uh, I'm so tired. My arm hurts. You're tired? My arm hurts, I don't know. You're tired because you don't want to go to sleep. Yeah, I do. Uh, you don't? When did I go to bed last night? Half past nine. When did you go to bed? Uh, about 10. Wow, you were later than 10. That's if you're stuck with that girl. I can't remember. Right, so Medusa's coming along quite well. So I didn't know. I did not start today's lesson by saying, Today I am going to create a Medusa type creature and it's going to look like this. So this is a. Wow. If you're rubbish with creativity and you're always saying, wow. I don't know. To be clear, this is a brilliant one because I refuse to accept that when you get these names done, that you look <laughs> I'm getting distracted if I get a slog in the corner. That you uh, <laughs> tell me for a week, don't talk to me when I'm talking because you distract me and I forget what I'm saying. Right, anyway, as I was saying, I refuse to accept that anyone doing this will not do it and then instantly get really creative and get really, really into it. And as I said, you could do this as many things as you want. You could change the way that you write your name. You could change the type of lettering that you use. You could change way that, the position of it on the page. You could change the type of letters that you use. You could even go quite robotic and go 3D. I know that Mr. Gary's watching. I don't know if he still is. He loves his robots. So you could actually have a 3D slant on all the letters. You could be really blocky. Have like a 3D slant on them and make like a robot you still want. Um, so you could go anywhere with this. They have to be symmetrical. They should be symmetrical. Yeah. But they are. Why are you having it out? It is symmetrical from the yeah. window. Oh, you mean the decoration you do? He's asking if the decoration does is symmetrical. It won't really matter now. So we're just coming along nicely. Oh, right, I'll see down the back of this actually. I just don't know much about Medusa. Right, so I'm going to go, what time are we at? Half past. That took half an hour. That makes sense actually, because in the classroom normally what would happen is this, would, this bit would take quite a bit. And then the decoration bit, I normally just, the class teacher only comes back at this point and I'm like, I'm out of here. And they get decorating by themselves. So when it comes, oh, actually, when it comes to decoration, colours, you can do whatever you want with this. I love, as you know, using Sharpies in the classroom. However, this paper is super duper thin. So if you are planning on using Sharpies, put something protective underneath the paper, otherwise you're going to go right through onto the table. 
I also love using Sharpies because you can do all of your outline in a Sharpie and then you could use another midi on top so you could use a Sharpie and then you could paint it with watercolours and those lines would still show up. Also you could use crayons with the Sharpies, just press quite hard or you could use them for shades and that's what I did with this one yesterday. I actually did it with crayons and then I painted the background with a black watercolour. So you could do anything you want decoration wise. You could proper paint it, you could oil pastels, you could use chalks, you can use, uh, it's got the chalk pens out, hopefully people in Liberty loves a chalk pen, you can use the chalk pens, you can use whatever you want. What I love using are my Sharpies and I love the new thin Sharpie that I've got for getting all the things and stuff. So yeah, we're going to wrap it up now and get decorating these. Maybe spend about 20 minutes, half an hour finishing them off and then I'll post the finished examples. So please, please, please do me a massive favour and send me the photos of the finished ones just so you can see how you've gone with this. Ah, hello, Ella and Abby. Hello. Hi, girls. Nice to see you. I don't know if I can bring these down. Mrs Hardy's watching. Just going to double check some more questions. Sam's here. Hello, Sam. Andrew's here, which means I'm wondering if Cameron's here. Da Granddad's saying you've got a good looking co presenter. Yes. Pretty handsome. Pretty handsome, but I'm quite biased. Hello, and I've got Devin and. Is that Clara or Chiara? Chiara. Sorry, I say it's terrible girls. Nice to see you. Oh, you're with. You're with. Uh, now. Now, Devin and Chiara, are you with Auntie Laura? Is Laura your auntie? Oh, I see. You are using, yeah, they're using Annie Laura's account, I think. Unless it's a different Laura, my dog. Maybe it's not Laura I went to school with. Right, I think I've read everything. I think I've got everyone. Hey, Luce. Thanks, Mrs. Hardy. Um, you're asking how I'm fine. I'm okay. I've got Mr. Cochrane home, so I'm much calmer. If you joined us last week, I was a bit stressed last week. But yeah, life's, life's good again, isn't it? I'm actually quite, I actually, don't tell anyone I said this, I'm actually quite enjoying lockdown. I'm saving lots of money, I'm not going to, sh to the shops as much. I'm not going to well, because I get to full reviews. Don't tell anybody that. Yeah, I get to get to full reviews. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite, doing quite well with lockdown because I'm not able to go to my favourite shops, like home sites, and all my favourite places. I'm missing my friends and my family. I'm really, really missing seeing family. We got to see Auntie Jackie on Sunday. She came round and sat in the garden, two metres apart, of course. So that was nice. We've seen Granddad a few times. He's come to the drawers and sat. But yeah, no, I'm much, much better now that Mr Cochrane's back because I can go to the shops and do things like normal and I don't have a mirror running around me thinking I'm nice 24 7. But yeah, I'm very, very well. I miss seeing you guys go at school. I miss seeing all your marvellous creations. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Um, so yeah. I'm going to wrap it up in a minute, so just make sure that you send me these photos once they're finished so we can see what they're like. I'd love to see how you get on with this. If you have any disasters, message me. I'll be around all day, so just give me a wee message if things didn't quite work out. And if it has gone wrong, just start again. This is one of these lessons that's kind of about the process more than the end result sometimes. So you might need to do a couple of times to get it right. I'm lucky because I've done it a few times now, so I kind of know what I'm doing. Although I was a bit upset because I had to redo one. Uh, to show you all because my folders are still in the big cupboard at Dunbar. I need to get over to get them, but I haven't really had a chance to go and get everything. Um, and I keep having to order things from Amazon as well. That's another bad thing about this lockdown thing. I don't have anything in the house, so I keep having to spend money on stuff. Right, I'm going to wrap it up now. Just double check that I've not missed anything. This looks. Hey, Lily. Laura, so Please. Laura's your mum. So you, it's not Laura then that I went to school with. I've just realised I've made a big mistake there. So Laura, you didn't go to Dunbarney, so you're probably a bit confused there. Hello, Eilish. I wonder if this is Eilish in my class. I don't know if this is Eilish in my class or not. Right. Take you off. I'll um, say bye-bye. Why? Are you going to say bye-bye? Oh, ah. Uh, can't just see where yeah. you go. Bye. We don't normally do this on iPad. We normally do this on my phone, so it's all very different. Mm -hmm. Right, lots of love. We will um, look forward to seeing your French examples, won't we? That's just really... Okay.
He was saying to the phone. He's doing a good job. <laughs> right. Lots of love. See you in a little while. Bye-bye.